basically uh, where we're at right now is you know, most of your teams are beginning to form. If they haven't already, you may, you may have some new team members and whatnot. Um, we want to give you right now kind of a, the opportunity uh, to meet their, you know, some of your team members. Uh, some of you may not have met in person. Hopefully you have already. Um, but we want to give you a chance to reflect and um, try to understand what it is that we're going to be doing uh, in this next week. Uh, which is hopefully meeting with your client and working towards your playbook. Um, so uh, if you have your team here, um, go ahead and reflect on these questions uh, for a good you know, 10 or so minutes. Um, come up with some thoughtful answers for them because uh, we want to be able to help you through this next week. Um, I know it's probably going to be pretty stressful with midterms and whatnot, and we want to make sure that we're setting you up for success when you meet with your clients because um, I know some of you have and most of you haven't yet. Um, and this will be, that will be the purpose of today's meeting, to um, really understand what it is that we're going to be doing with the playbook um, and make sure that you have everything that you need to make a dope-ass playbook for your client. So, um, yeah, go, go ahead and talk uh, amongst yourselves and reflect on those questions. All right, guys, let's get started. My name is Nick Gomez. If you haven't seen me yet, I've been here doing these past couple meetings. I'm the brand scientist at Marcom Strategies, and today we're basically gonna be doing introduction into playbooks. So, let's start off by seeing where everyone's at. You guys had a good couple of minutes to catch up with your teams, hopefully get to talk to one another. Um, let's just do show of hands. Raise your hands if you guys have met all of your teammates so far. Don't be afraid, put them high. Okay. Um, raise your hands if you met your clients already. Okay, so about two, okay. Um, for the, the two that have met your clients, did anything surprise you when meeting them? I was shocked to know something. Okay, what about you, no? What was your favorite part? Um, I think getting like, to know what their position, why their positions was important to them and like why their community work was important to like what they do in the larger picture of that community. Okay, so did you feel like you had a better connection after meeting with them? Yeah. Okay, good. What about you, David? Uh, my favorite part was, well, I already met them at the mixer, so I already knew something about them. Uh, they kind of told me what the goals were, I thought that was really interesting. And also, they're just really fun to hang around with because they're, I don't know, just very casual. Yeah. And uh, they're, I w when I was asking them questions, I wouldn't really have to ask every question, but if it was one question, they would like start answering all of them because they're just really passionate about, passionate about what to do. Passionate about what to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I don't know, it's just very easy to talk to them. Good. And it's communication is very easy. Nice. That'll definitely translate over when you're trying to make content for them. Let's go over today's agenda. Um, we'll be doing a quick recap of last week. We'll discuss this client intake form, which is this form you're supposed to be doing after you meet your clients. Um, but before that, step it back a couple steps, the brand checklist. We'll go over that today. Um, give an introduction into the playbook. You guys might not even know what that is, so this will be perfect. Uh, everyone will be informed about it. And some of the brand scientists, they asked at the previous workshop, well, how do we even target audiences? How do we find specific people on the internet and get the content that we want to send right to them, right to their phone at the right times? We'll break that down in good time. Um, tone and voice of the playbook. Each of your clients has a different tone and a different voice that they use internally. They use externally with their customers and it's gonna be your guys' job to figure those out and use it in content. So you can't just like make a post for them and then it just be your voice and say, for example, Merced County Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. You're not just going to be using the same colloquial language that we use, you know. Um, whenever we do things like our previous client, Bulls Farm, I'm not going to go on there and say hella and things like that, things that are in my normal, you know, diction. Uh, so we'll go over that. And then we'll go over this plan for the week so that you all know how to be on par. Um, I don't want anyone to get lost or feel like they're lost at any point. So we have the executive team at the back who's always willing to help. Um, I've been sending emails out to the brand scientists. So you guys have my phone number, you have my email. 
um, feel free to, to hit me up whenever. Let's go over a recap of last week. So on the left, we have the general meeting. This is the, basically the main gist of it. Um, we did this form called, what do you know about your client? It's just a, a brainstorm off of their name, maybe meeting them, thinking what you think as if you were a potential customer. For example, Olympus Athletics. If I didn't know what they were, I would just be like Olympus Athletics. I, I, I don't know. But because you know them, they're mainly about weightlifting and exercising nutrition and those types of things. Um, so I wanted everyone to do that exercise so they could figure out someone who's in Merced who might not have heard about some of these clients, what they would think about these clients. Would they go buy something from them just based on, say, the name or what they think they do? Um, we'll go over the deeper responsibilities right now, too. And then team synergy, synchronized energy. We want you guys to feel comfortable with one another, which is why we always open it up with questions, speaking to the people around you. Um, there's going to be a lot of communication going on here. You guys are going to need to over-communicate, so you have to get used to it. You have to be able to feel or be comfortable outside of your comfort zone. Um, and then on the far right, we have the team plans. So this is what we had uh, for the, these next two weeks periods, um, starting last week. So I guess this is extended to this week. Brand checklist, we'll be doing that today. So you won't have to hear about that anymore. And then client meetings are going to be happening this upcoming week. And then the show's on the road. We'll be, we'll be getting to it from there. Okay, so brand scientists. This is what I do. This is what I'll be teaching you guys to do who are in the same position. Um, I like to think of it just like the king of the north here. You are looking at your playing field. You are looking at the pieces all around the board, um, trying to make your next move, trying to see, okay, this happened over here, so how am I going to respond to that? I'm going to try to drop a pretty cool content piece to these people over here. How am I going to do this? How am I going to target them at the right time? So that's how I always like to think about it. I make a game of it, try to make it fun. Um, so your responsibilities, uh, brand scientist, raise your hand if you're a brand scientist in here. Ooh, a lot of them. All right, cool. Um, you're, the, you're the strategy person. You're going to be making the plans ahead of time with the content creators, laying out the schedule, um, doing community management as a post is going on. You're going to be seeing the comments that are happening how people are interacting with it, if they're liking it, if they're not liking it, and then you're just gonna have to trust your gut a lot of the time when it comes to these things. After that, looking at the data. How did it turn out? Can we make it better? Should we split test different things? You might have more than one content creator who disagrees on a certain image or specific copy that you're trying to do, so we'll learn how to test these things. Um, shadow posts, so it doesn't really show up on your page, but it shows up just like, in advertisements, I'm sure you guys see all the time on Instagram, like you're, you're scrolling through and then you see an image and you're like, what the hell is this? I don't follow them. Oh, it's a sponsored post. Oh, okay, nope, nope, I still don't want to see that. I'll be teaching you guys how to do that. But we're going to try to make it so people do want to see it. You know, that's the main point of, of this whole entire thing, getting new people to go towards your client by making them connect emotionally to your content. Content creators. So, yes. This is a little uh, less in depth in the overall, um, I suppose, like coding and data of it. This is putting your heart and soul into basically your clients, uh, what I think of what they put their heart and soul into, finding their passion and trying to put that into art for them, um, connecting through these pieces so that people around Merced can then feel that connection and hopefully they show up, they convert. Um, you want them to go from non-customer to customer. Um, so responsibilities throughout, creating this playbook that we'll be outlining today, um, adjusting content to data from all these brand scientists in here, um, and products just as you would. Videos, you'll learn to create GIFs, um, take cool photos. Chrissy's doing a fantastic job of creating new uh, videos all the time. So yeah, you guys can learn a thing or two from her. Okay, so team activity number one. You guys are gonna work with your team here. So on the left, if you've already met with your client, I want you guys to fill out your client intake form. So this is a general brief of what your uh, meeting with them was like, um, just the main points of what you got out of it. And these main points will be 
uh, basically what structures your playbook key aspects of it and if you haven't then you're going to fill out the brand checklist so just you have your laptops in front of you type in the bitlies and we'll do this for about 10 to 15 minutes okay brand checklist out of the way so you guys did your research on them um, to those who didn't know their clients maybe you have a better insight on them um, anything stick out to anyone there's no crazy reviews on there? No? Okay. That's good at least. Um, so now we'll be making this segue into the actual playbook. So this is, this is your guide. This is uh, what you refer to when you just have something to fall back on. This is going to be the staple to all content that's made, how you're going to be interacting with your communities. Basically, the main three staples that I want you all to take away from this that we're going to try to address through this playbook are these last three bullets. What problem does X uniquely solve? You're gonna to try to figure out what separates your client from everyone else in their industry. If it's the Lucky Lotus Lounge over there, what separates them from every other bar? Is it just because they're not only a bar, but they're also a restaurant, the coolest bar in town, they have super fire wings? Um, that's for you guys to figure that out and see what works for the audiences out there. Um, or even what pain points does X uniquely remove? Um, what ease does your client provide that other people don't? Olympus Athletics, they do an awesome job doing programs and periodization for people who might not know how to exercise, so they'll make those things up for them. They just have to adhere to it. That could be one of the pain points they remove. All right, principles one. Number two, who are their 1,000 true fans? These are your ride or dies. You have to find them. So at the end of the day, you might have a slow day. No one's coming in to interact with your client, but you got that one homie who just keeps coming in and ordering the same thing because they fuck with you and they are the ones who really like you. Those are the people who you have to keep. You treat them good. You interact with them. You know their name. Those are, you're going you're gonna to be doing the same things on social. Um, I gave an example to the brand scientist who showed up this past weekend at the workshop. Um, one reason why I like to go to Rayleigh's is because uh, Joe, he, he works in the produce section. He stocks the vegetables and uh, the fruit in the mornings. And so I showed up last week and he uh, told me good morning, said, you know, how you greet each other, asked me how my day was going. And then he let me try the difference between a regular banana and or an organic banana. And so we're just there in the produce section, you know, just opening up bananas, like, you know, feeling like a boss, because who, who does that? And the organic one did taste better, but it was through that interaction where I was like, you know what? Next time I go and I'm going to pick up bananas or go to the produce section, I'm probably going to go to Rayleigh's, because not only do I know that it's awesome there, there's this interaction, I feel uh, like a friend there, but the organic did taste better. So now I have proof that their produce, their product was better. So that interaction, it was physical, it was in the real world, but we wanna to try to in, uh, recreate those interactions digitally through social. It can be done, um, and it can be done well. So we'll, we'll learn how to do all that together. Um, so 1,000 true fans, major key. And then number three, how do you turn casual fans into diehard fans? Um, sometimes it just takes the right content to the right people. Um, <clears throat> I know I'm always on this quest here in Merced to just find the best tacos, connecting it back to last week. I tried this taco place last night called uh, Taquira El Palmar. And it was really good, but the tacos were so hot. They were so hot, my tongue felt like it was swollen. Um, but I really liked that. So that's how I was thinking, okay, it's hard to tell between just tacos alone to turn me into this diehard fan because most tacos around the area taste pretty similar. So I'm gonna have to go and try something else. And maybe if their burrito, if their rice and their beans are on point, and then that could cancel out this spiciness, maybe I just became a diehard fan. But they didn't market to me. I looked online, I had to do my own digging. It's your guys' job to make sure that your clients don't, or your customers don't have to do that. So that you just present that fire looking burrito in their face and you say, boom, perfect blend of spicy and savory won't be too hot and it's delicious awesome picture you made it way easier for them they now know where to go they now know what separates them and if you do it right um, you just have a new fan all right so 
what a uh, playbook entails. This is a snapshot from our Bulls uh, playbook. You guys will all be getting uh, this playbook as an example. So for Marcom, Bulls was our client uh, about last year. Um, so this is just snapshot of the overview of this whole entire thing, the index basically. Content strategy, we'll go over that. Uh, we'll just be going over objectives today. Categories and content matrix, a little bit deeper. Um, we'll be going over those at the workshop this Friday and this Saturday. I'll be giving you guys the time and place at the end of this meeting. Um, we'll be going over a, a tad bit of audiences, just the general uh, outline of it. We won't be going into the nitty gritty of how to target people yet. Um, and then we'll be going over tone and persona. The rest will be going over this weekend. Okay, objectives. So this is something that you all have in common. Regardless of who your client is, we want to drive these three main objectives, this nice triangle of building fan. Awareness, you got to get your name out there. You got to get your logo out there. You want people to recognize you. Um, through this awareness, <laughs> um, they recognize you, and then that's how you'll set yourself apart. So you'll be doing specific posts where you'll just be trying to boost yourself, do a promotional post. So for bulls, it would just be a nice picture of a cotton harvester and getting it out there. Bulls Farming Co. has their logo. Boom. People who don't know them, they're like, you put enough money into this content, say I put $100 into it, I just reached 15,000 people who might not have known who my client was, but now they recognize the name, they recognize the logo, and they at least have an idea of what we do. Um, this goes into advocacy. Uh, we'll, we'll go down. Affinity. So that's connecting emotionally to people. You want them to actually feel something towards your content or else what's the point of it? There's something that drives you all to like a post on Instagram and stuff that makes you just pass by it, you know. And advocacy. Making them feel it so much that they actually feel compelled to share it. Send it to all the people who they know and be like, this is hot shit, look at this. I want you all to see this. And that's the content that we're gonna try to create, but it's through touching on their emotions through your art, like I said earlier. Audiences. And we're gonna be running through this a little bit faster just cause we're short on time. And we've gone through a little bit of this in the past workshop and we'll be going more in depth at these upcoming workshops. So bear with me and let me know if you have any questions. Just throw that hand up. Um, audiences. Just breaking it down into two groups right here. Your true fans, your 1,000 true fans like I was speaking about earlier, and your non-customers. So for our non-customers, potential buyers outside of the existing customers, they're out there. For your clients, there is this whole entire industry around the area. Um, and you're gonna try to woo these customers from other businesses to go to your client instead. So you're gonna have to create something good and compelling to make them wanna do so. Um, uh, these are three different tiers of non-customers right here. First one, already in the market, can easily be wooed away. For example, me, jump in taco shop to taco shop, I don't have no type. Um, number two, those who refuse the industry as a whole. Someone who might have had a bad experience with that client, or not necessarily that client, but maybe just that branch, that industry, that market. So um, I'm thinking back just Lucky Lotus just because it connects with me. Maybe someone doesn't like uh, that specific cuisine of food. They had it once and they got sick, so they're like, I'm never ever eating that food again. Well, we're gonna try to persuade them. No, 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 look at this awesome pad thai. You're not gonna say no to this if you come in and try it. Make it easy for them to see how delicious it looks and make them reconsider. Um, and then unexplored non-customers. By sending out this content to enough people and knowing how to use these ad auctions, People who might not have even heard of you could be in your next diehard fan. Okay, tone and voice. So this one is super important for all of you. Your different clients are gonna have different tones, different voices. Um, so I'm sure that the uh, Chamber of Commerce around here are gonna be speaking a little bit differently than let's say Little Love and Pizza, you know? Take a look at this. You guys will learn to figure out what the tone and voices of your clients when you're interacting with them at your client meetings. Listen intently on how they say things and how they speak passionately about their organization. Try to think about how they use their tenses, their language. And uh, for example, 
emojis. Not every single one of your clients is going to be blowing it up with emojis. So knowing what market your uh, client is in, then you will know, okay, well, maybe this post will use a lot of emojis. But I don't know. It just depends on who you're working with. So like I was saying, language and purpose. There needs to be a reason why you guys say things and why you're putting a piece of content out. It's not just because like, oh shit, we need to get this out. Uh, let's just make something quick and just shoot it out. No, no, no. There needs to be a reason. This is where the brand scientist comes in. You want to already think of the outcome that you want before you even send this out. You have to be thinking about, okay, what objective are we going for here? Are we trying to connect people emotionally? Are we just trying to get our name out there? Or are we trying to make a badass video that people are going to want to share and send to their whole entire family so they can let them know, all right, you got to go here. So you'll be thinking about those when we do the content calendars. We'll brief over those this weekend. Team activity number two. All right, get together with your teams, get a piece of paper, and I want you guys to first start off with your audiences. Just off the top of your head, just start writing down as much as you can think of who you think your current customers are by looking at these uh, brand checklists, or if you've already met with your clients and done the brand checklist, then think about who they said frequent their spots. And after that, I want you guys to think of your non-customers. Think of not just say, like, you wanna be a little specific. Don't just be like men, you know? Say specific clicks. Because that's the thing about this too, is when we're targeting on these social sites, it gets really creepy how in depth you can go into this stuff. Like our current client, Livingston Community Health, they are a health organization who we're trying to push content towards moms right now. So when I'm going into Facebook ad targeting, it's weird the different types of moms that they consider on there. Fitness moms, professional moms, stay at home moms, like all kinds of different stuff. So you guys will learn how to use these different types. But right now on your papers, go for those niches. Try to really go in depth and put them into a specific category. Okay, your client meeting is coming up. Make sure that you take a look at that initial client meeting outline before. Super important. We want you guys to ask specific questions so that you guys will have the right answers that you need and to also record it uh, audio on your phone so that you can then refer back to it later if there's specific things that you missed that we can then get or even for content if we want a voiceover on specific things. Um, review with your client the agreement. Make sure they've signed it if they haven't already. Go over that with Chris or Mikey. Um, then you're going to present with them the brand checklist that you guys just did um, because like I said, this is their baby, this organization that they put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into, so they need to know what people are saying about them. Um, do it in a heartfelt manner. Don't just like rip a Band-Aid off and just be like, this guy said you suck. No, don't do that. Just be like, the reviews are, are <laughs> here and there. Okay, and then fill out the client intake form after your meeting with them, and then that'll give you the key pieces to your playbook that you need. And then finally, playbook workshop this weekend. Any questions about this whole entire thing? We good? All right, and that's it.